every result is in this area now. It all used to be so simple. As the pendulum swung between Labour and the Conservatives, seats fell uniformly across the country. 99 majority for Labour rather than the 101, which we'd extrapolated from a 3% swing. Near pinpoint accuracy, but no more. This time, I really have no idea. I'd be surprised if anybody gets an overall majority, but what the configuration will be. There are so many wild cards. Trying to work out who'll run Westminster after May is fueling a whole new science. It's called political modelling. It's been big in the United States for decades now. It's truly taking off over here. Prepare yourself for a tutorial. Turns out the estimates of beta, let's call it beta hat, um, for much of the cycle is approximately uh, 0.5. Oxford's professor Stephen Fisher feeds polling numbers through his equations to try to anticipate what history tells us tends to happen as the election day approaches. Polls tend to overestimate uh, Labour and underestimate the Conservatives, and so they might do a bit. They, those the Conservatives might overperform the polls, and Labour should be more likely to underperform the polls if history is an accurate guide. We can say for each of those election cycles that it is some kind of constant. So what does Professor Fisher's model tell us we're in for in May? The central forecast would be for the Conservatives to be just over 300 seats at the time of the next election, Labour on about 275, and the Liberal Democrats may be falling to as 20 or even 15 seats. The biggest change the forecasters are having to cope with is the final demise of the two-party system. We used to be largely Labour or Conservative all swinging between the two. Now we swing all over the place. There could be 10 parties elected here after the general election. And within the United Kingdom, the nations, regions and constituencies are all behaving very differently. There are so many wild cards. The fate of the Lib Dems, UKIP, SNP, these things could grow or fade in the next four or five months. After four decades of following elections, Peter Kellner's pretty convinced we're heading for a hung parliament. If the election were held now, my best guess is Tories slightly ahead, maybe 285 seats to Labour 275, Lib Dems and SNP both getting around 30, UKIP maybe half a dozen. Some insist the betting odds are the best predictor. The bookies claim they've got a great track record. In the European elections earlier this year, uh, it turned out that our odds were a better predictor of what the final scores were going to be for the parties than the polls were. Uh, and I suspect we'll see something similar at this election. Follow the money is your advice? Um, I think that's always, it's always good to take a, pay attention to where the money is going. That, that discipline of having to put cold, hard cash down is often a very, very good predictor of what the result's going to be. But if the betting slips all paid out, they wouldn't be in business. The bookies raked in money at the Scottish referendum from yes voters caught up in the emotion. Here's Ladbrook's take on the May result. So our odds at the moment are saying Labour will just about get the most seats, 287 seats as opposed to 281 for the Tories, so neither party with a majority. We're seeing the Liberal Democrats getting around 27 seats, losing over half. Uh, we've got the SNP on 25, up from their current six, and UKIP at the moment, the central forecast is eight seats. And would you put your own money on that? I have had a little bit of money on UKIP to slightly overperform that. In the end, who governs after May? could come down to not who's top of the pile with the largest number of MPs, but who can knit together arrangements or a coalition with other parties. Yet another unknown in a very unpredictable new year. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Westminster.